Assalamu alaikum, namaste, sat sri akal and good day. You are listening to Awaaz Community Radio. Today we're talking about ovarian cancer. It's Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. Now if you'd like to get in touch with us, you can log on to our website www.awazcommunityradio.com or you can email us awazradio at hotmail.com. If you'd like to ring us, our number is 0161 839 7857. We're on Facebook too. Just type in Awaz Community Radio or tweet us Awaz Radio 122. Thank you for listening to Awaz Community Radio with your host, Syrah. Today in the studio, we have Lorraine talking about ovarian cancer awareness. Hi, Lorraine. Thank you for coming in. Hi, Sai. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you in, and we'd love to hear a bit more about this really important topic. So can you talk to us a little bit about what is ovarian cancer? Okay. Uh, I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer myself back in uh, 2011. Obviously, the ovaries are the um, reproductive organs um, and when you get ovarian cancer um, the, uh, the, can- the cells tend to grow very quickly and form tumours. In the UK there is about 7,000 women diagnosed per year and that's about 821 in the northwest alone. One woman in 50 will get ovarian cancer in a lifetime. Women that have a family history of breast, ovarian or prostate cancer are more likely to have the cancer. Most of the cases occur after the age of 50 when women have gone through the change of life. But younger women can also be affected. The symptoms for ovarian cancer can be a a bit difficult to pick up because they're common to lots of other conditions as well. But the key thing to remember is that they are persistent, they're there all the time, they're frequent, that they they occur 12 or more times during the day and that they're new to you. Common symptoms are feeling really bloated. When I uh, became ill, I felt really bloated all the time. Not being able to eat properly because you feel too full and and when you do eat you feel sick and also changes to your bowel habits so that can either be constipation or diarrhea. So if if someone listening today is experiencing these symptoms what kind of advice would you have for them? If 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 you're feeling these symptoms and you're concerned at all about having a various ovarian cancer the first thing you need to do is to go and have a chat with your GP Um, I know that can be quite intimidating sometimes Um, so one one of the things you might want to consider is keeping a symptom diary that's just making a note each day of what symptoms you've been experiencing or you can go to you can use something called the beat tracker which is available on www.beatonline.info BEAT stands for bloating, eating, abdominal pain. Tell your GP, which is the, th- the three most common symptoms, is bloating, eating, and abdominal pain. So keep a symptom diary. When you go and see your GP, try not to waffle. Get to the point and be clear. And you need to make sure that your GP is aware that these symptoms are new to you. A lot of women get misdiagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome. The difference between the symptoms for ovarian cancer is that they are frequent, persistent and new to you. It's also really unusual for women in their 50s to start developing irritable bowel syndrome at that age. Take along a leaflet of symptoms. These are available from the various cancer, cancer charities. That can be really helpful.
if you're still feeling anxious about going to see your GP, take a friend or a family member with you, but make sure they know why you're going. If your GP assures you that there's nothing wrong, ask your GP why they're not worried and get them to explain it to you. If you're still getting symptoms after all that, keep going back to your GP or you can go and see another GP at your practice. So you think it's it's definitely important to get a second opinion? Yes, yes, definitely. If you're not happy, you're still getting the symptoms, go and see someone else. Some of you are probably wondering uh, what is Ovarian C Cancer Awareness Month. It's usually held in March in the UK. It's really important to raise the awareness of the symptoms because only 3% of women know what the symptoms actually are. And we also do a lot, we also do a lot of work to raise awareness amongst local GPs as well. There are some training courses that, that they can do which are available online as part of their professional development. Now talking more about why we raise awareness, as I said, mentioned previously, on, only 3% of women in the UK are aware, are aware of the symptoms. 12 women will die a day of this disease. So by raising awareness, we're saving lives. And also, we're trailing behind the rest of Europe as well. More women die in the UK than we do, do anywhere else in Europe. And that's because we don't know enough about the symptoms. So as we say, Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month is running all this month. If you want to get involved, there's lots of things that you can do. If you go to the site, which is ocam.org.uk for more information. Thank you so much Lorraine for coming in and sharing your personal experiences and talking about ovarian cancer. Thank you Sarah, it's been a pleasure. It's been great having you in and I hope it's helped raise the awareness of this cancer and hopefully someone will be helped by this. You've been listening to Awaz Community Radio, your host has been Sarah. thank you very much for listening. Our contact details again, you can email us on awazradio at hotmail.com, log on to our website www.awazcommunityradio.com If you have any questions or if you would like us to mention those contact numbers again, we're on Facebook. It's Awaz Community Radio and we're also on Twitter, Awaz Radio 122. So please take care of yourself. You've been listening to Awaz Community Radio. Till next time.